Quieres ser amigo del cartel? I'm sorry, I, d I don't. Uh... You want to be a friend of the cartel? Hmm? He said uh, I'd be a friend of the cartel. A friend of the cartel? You know what that means? It means money. But do you want to be a friend of the cartel? Just tell me what you want. Jesus! Oh! Oh, no, 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 no! No, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio! He's the one! Ay, siempre, soy amigo! Siempre, siempre, Shut soy up, amigo del cartel! Lalo didn't send you? No, Lalo! <laughs> hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down discussing the infamous line, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio. Years ago, I created a theory video based around this line, but since then, just so much has happened, and for a while now, I've really wanted to make an updated video on this topic, so here it is. Warning of spoilers for Breaking Bad, El Camino, along with Better Call Saul up to the season 5 finale. We'll be going through the original, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio scene, what it meant to Breaking Bad, all the theories that surround it, followed by the lead-up of anticipation during Better Call Saul involving Ignacio, Nacho, along with why the reveal and introduction of Lalo Salamanca's character is so important and awaited for. So first off, let's go ahead and explain the original It Wasn't Me, It Was Ignacio line during Breaking Bad before Better Call Saul ever existed. And don't worry, we'll be discussing the significance for each portion of dialogue throughout the video. This line is said during Saul Goodman's very first episode in Breaking Bad, Season 2, Episode 8, Better Call Saul. Yeah, that's right, Saul Goodman's first episode is titled Better Call Saul, I'm sure some of you knew that already, but during this episode, Walt and Jesse kidnap Saul and drag him out into the desert at gunpoint on his knees with a grave dug out in front of him. Saul understandably starts freaking out at this, and he also starts speaking Spanish as he assumes that this is related to cartel business. During Saul's initial freakout is when he says the lines, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one. No, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one! Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no. Ay, siempre, soy amigo. Siempre, siempre, Shut soy up, amigo man. del cartel. And then in Spanish, he says, siempre soy amigo del cartel. You're gonna have to excuse my pronunciations for this video just saying, but when Jesse tells Saul to shut up and speak English, Saul realizes that they aren't involved with the cartel. To confirm this, Saul questions, Lalo didn't send you, no Lalo. Shut up! I just speak English. Lalo didn't send you, no Lalo? And just as a side note, for some reason this is so important to people, it's always been such a debate whether Saul says Don Lalo or No Lalo. Now although No Lalo isn't proper English, that's what the subtitles for the episode say on Netflix. So after Jesse responds with who to Saul's question about Lalo, Saul is instantly relieved realizing that they aren't involved with Lalo or the Salamancas in any way. Saul goes on to say, oh thank Christ, what can I do for you gentlemen? Lalo didn't send you, no Lalo! Who? Oh, thank God! Oh, Christ! Oh, I thought... What, what can I do for you, gentlemen? This instantly relaxed demeanor implies a few things. First off, that whoever Walt and Jesse are, they can't possibly be as bad as Lalo, and secondly, that this isn't Saul's first rodeo in the desert. After what we've seen Saul go through during Better Call Saul Season 5 Episode 8 Bagman, we know that Saul has had worse desert outings than this one, believe it or not, but the rest of the scene and episode involve Walt and Jesse paying Saul to get Badger out of custody, leaving what Saul said about this Ignacio or Lalo person out in the desert never to be answered again. This left fans wondering what Saul was talking about, who was Ignacio? Why was Saul blaming him for something? What was he blaming him for? Who was Lalo? Why was Saul so afraid of him? And what did Saul do with Ignacio to piss off Lalo to the point that Saul would throw Ignacio under the bus, whoever he may be? Now, the characters Lalo and Ignacio were originally predicted before their inception by fans, with the it wasn't me, it was Ignacio thing being originally a fan theory before Better Call Saul was announced as a spin-off. So 
not only have people been theorizing about this since before Lalo was introduced in Better Call Saul, people have been theorizing about this since before Nacho was introduced and before Better Call Saul was even a thing. This is no doubt the reason why it's gained so much traction over the years, even piquing the interest of the show creators. Now, it's definitely possible that the show creators could have just thought to elaborate on this in Better Call Saul all on their own, but the fan theories definitely helped fuel the fire. The original It Wasn't Me, It Was Ignacio scene happened in Season 2 of Breaking Bad, and we didn't get Lalo Salamanca until the end of Better Call Saul Season 4. That's a long time to wait just for the character, three and a half seasons of Breaking Bad, along with four seasons of Better Call Saul, not to mention the multiple breaks that they had between the shows, along with an order to film El Camino. Now, it's been completely worth the wait, don't get me wrong, but I'm just putting into perspective how long this anticipation has been ongoing. Oh, hey, aquí justo a tiempo. Hold on one second. This is why Lalo has instantly become such an important character, not only because the actor is great and the character is great, but also because this is why the fandom was so excited when he finally showed up. Because during Breaking Bad and shortly following its conclusion, people were speculating who Lalo and Nacho were, but all they had to go off of were their names. It wasn't until Better Call Saul that the character Nacho Varga was introduced, which reignited the flame and added more fuel to the fire of speculation. Nacho's official name was confirmed to be Ignacio way back in Better Call Saul Season 1, and it was later confirmed that yes, Nacho Varga is the Ignacio that Saul briefly mentions during that scene in Breaking Bad. With Nacho confirmed as the Ignacio, everyone started theorizing again, especially about the mystery still being Lalo. Since Lalo is just a short name for Eduardo, people were comparing Lalo to Don Eladio as well. After Better Call Saul Season 3, the lead up for Season 4 included the show creators constantly teasing about introducing a new character named Lalo, who would be a menace to everybody. They left us for an entire year of speculation with nothing more than the confirmation at a panel that the actor would be Tony Dalton, so we kind of knew what he'd look like. Finally, Lalo is introduced into the canon during the end of Better Call Saul Season 4, when he also introduces himself to Nacho. Yo soy Eduardo, but you can call me Lalo. Y tú debes de ser Varga, ¿no? It was technically Nacho's fault for getting Lalo involved, accidentally but through a direct domino effect. Nacho wants to get out of the game, but in order to do that, he feels the need to take out his current boss in order to slip away. First, he gets a mic to send Tuco to jail, but then when Hector steps in, he gets himself in even more trouble due to Hector wanting to use Nacho's father's company to smuggle drugs. We're Here's Papi. which is technically Mike and Gus's fault for sabotaging Hector's shipment, but I digress, this whole show is one big domino effect. Anyways, Nacho swapped Hector's heart pills to try and get rid of him as well, but as we know, Hector survives, again thanks to Gus, and this is why Hector's in a wheelchair during Breaking Bad. Next, Lalo steps in for Hector and Tuco after a season of Nacho running the place, but Nacho also got blackmailed by Gus, so... I know what you've done. The Salamancas, they do not. You are... Nacho isn't really doing the best for himself here. Now, regardless of if Hector would have died or not, they probably would have sent in Lalo regardless. Nacho tried taking out his two biggest problems, but then the cartel threw an even greater problem at him, Lalo. Lalo. No matter who Nacho tries to eliminate, they just throw someone worse at him after. Although we only got a short time with Lalo during season four, we craved more. This once again fueled more theories that are still going on today. It's interesting how long fans have been awaiting for an answer and that the show creators have taken this throwaway idea from a single line of dialogue and they turned it into a multiple new amazing characters such as Nacho and Lalo with multiple overlapping story arcs. Remember initially this it wasn't me it was Ignacio no Lalo stuff was all supposed to be a throwaway line. Now some throwaway lines from Breaking Bad have restrained them during Better Call Saul such as the whole situation with Saul's previous wives. How many wives did he have? Was he actually married to them? Uh, we have to create stories for them now. Sir do you have documentation of your two previous dissolutions? Yeah. But apparently, this Ignacio line was one that they really enjoyed to run with. Nacho has always been my favorite Better Call Saul original character, but Lalo is starting to rival that if only we had more time with him, with him only showing up at season 4 and the show only having 6 seasons. Now let's take a break from the Better Call Saul history lesson and jump into what Saul is saying in Spanish. He says, Siempre soy amigo del cartel, which in English means, I have always been a friend to the cartel. The true meaning behind this line has been a mystery since recently actually, because in Better Call Saul Season 5, they've given the meaning for why Saul was spitting this out when he was in fear of his life. Now, during Season 5, Lalo asks Saul, or Jimmy rather, if he wants to be a friend of the cartel. 
¿Quieres ser amigo del cartel? Now we know through Jimmy's experience being a bag man for Lalo that this is where this random Spanish comes from. You want to be a friend of the cartel? When he's waiting for the twins to get the bags of money, he says, Yo soy abogado, which means I am a lawyer. Yo soy abogado. 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 Lawyer. He also says abogado, amigo del cartel, right before he's about to get shot and killed when Mike saves him. It didn't work then, but it's the first thing that Saul goes to when Walt and Jesse have him out in the desert and he thinks that it's related to Lalo. And it's kind of crazy that when Saul's about to die or he thinks he's about to die, the only thing that he can do is try to plea in broken Spanish. Just like Kim, Jimmy thinks that he can get himself out of pretty much any situation just by using his words. And as you can see, sometimes words work and sometimes they don't. Saul got himself out of that pickle by talking to Walt and Jesse and talking them down, but he wasn't able to do so back in the Bagman episode and Mike had to take action. And also, as much as I love the Bagman episode, if I'm not showing that much footage from it right now, it's because that whole episode is actually copyrighted, so it's really difficult to show any scene from just that episode and not get a strike. Like, it's really weird. They really, they really put the band hammer down on episode Bagman. I'm gonna have to show pictures of it if I want to talk about it for real. Alright, digression upon digression, we were talking about Saul's Spanish, and we'll have to wait and see if in Better Call Saul Season 6 this holds up any more significance than it already has, but Season 5 elaborated on it tremendously, not only explaining why Saul does what he does, but they bounce that idea throughout Season 5 as Saul struggles with Kim and his choices to work for Lalo. I love how Kim even asks him, do you want to be a friend of the cartel? Do you want to be a friend of the cartel? No. And yes, to date this video, we're currently discussing this while awaiting Better Call Saul Season 6. I have a Lalo's Revenge prediction video up already discussing most of my current thoughts about him, and I cannot await for Season 6. Now to clear some things up about the whole situation that we now know. First off, obviously Lalo Salamanca is a new original character and a force to be reckoned with. I love how he's a Salamanca as well, referenced as Tuco's cousin. You have business with my cousin, Tuco. You know, Tuco told me about you. And he seems to deeply love Hector. There are some fan theories speculating about how Lalo isn't a Salamanca by blood, but that's to only feed the theory that Lalo survives going into Breaking Bad or even Gene's timeline. Since Gus tells Hector in Breaking Bad that he's the last surviving Salamanca, either Lalo is dead by then, he's hiding and Gus thinks that he's dead, or Lalo was never truly a Salamanca. I wouldn't entertain this any more than I already have, other than saying that I do believe that Gus is telling Hector the truth in that moment. I don't think that he's lying, I think that he's right, and that he truly believes that he's right, that Hector is the last Salamanca, and that they go out together with a bang. Now, Better Call Saul Season 5 focused around Gus versus Lalo versus Nacho, and with Gus being the only player that we still see in the game currently during Breaking Bad, I'm worried for Nacho, and I think that Lalo's time is almost up, which sucks because it feels like we just got him. Now, is the reason why they both disappear related to what Saul is scared of Lalo for years later during Breaking Bad? What do you think? Does Lalo survive or does he die and if he does die why does Saul still think that he's alive in Breaking Bad to the point that Saul's still afraid of Lalo for something that he's done. We're still waiting to see what Saul and Nacho could possibly do to screw over Lalo and make him infinitely pissed at him but whatever it is they must have gotten away with it at least for some time because when Saul gets dragged out of the desert by Walt and Jesse he automatically thinks oh what sort of things have I done that would get me in this sort of trouble that would get me this sort of consequence and he can actually think of something when you take a step back and just look at it from, you know, the throwaway line that it originally was, oh wow, this guy actually has something that he's pleading for. He actually has another reason why he could be out here in the desert in front of his own grave. That was just such good character building. And then for them to take that and not only turn it into something, but turn it into something so good in Better Call Saul, I could gush over this for a while, as you could tell. Now back on topic, this thing that he thinks he's in trouble for, the reason why he thinks he's out in the desert. This involves Lalo, and since he thinks that he's just now getting screwed over for whatever he is, he must have gone away for something bad that involved Nacho, but then maybe he thinks that Lalo has recently found out and is now after him. And no, I don't think that Lalo is currently active during Breaking Bad. He's never mentioned by anyone, he's never seen, he's never referenced. I really think that Lalo ended up dying somehow at the hands of Gus, Mike, or even Nacho, but that Saul never finds out. I've discussed this before, so excuse me for repeating myself quick 
but Lalo dying without Saul ever knowing is the only way for Saul to still be terrified of him during Breaking Bad, when in fact, Lalo has been long dead. Lalo didn't send you! No, Lalo! It might just be because of the way that I'm interpreting it personally, but I do feel like they're bringing up old beef. No, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one! I bet Saul hasn't seen Ignacio or Nacho in years at this point. Who knows what happens to him, I guess we'll find out in season 6, but yeah, so he hasn't seen Nacho in years, and he's just throwing him under the bus because he thinks whatever, whatever he did with Nacho to screw over Lalo... What's he up to, man? What's he doing? They got away with it for multiple years, and it was so bad that Saul thinks that Lalo would drag him out into the desert like this for it. So I'm rambling here, but I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to emphasize this situation, that this mystery that we still have to find out for season 6, and I really hope that they give us a proper answer. It doesn't have to be the most crazy thing in the world, I don't have, you know, out of world expectations, but I do want a solid answer to this mystery, I want it to all get nicely wrapped up in a bow by the end of season 6. What about Nacho Varga, right? Would your competitors notice him? He seems like he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders. Ignacio? Yeah, sure, I mean, he's good for a lot of things. For seven million? A guy like that could get real dumb real fast, you know? So I'm really happy to finally properly chronologically break down this topic as it's something that's interested me for a very long time. I've talked about it here and there, but I've never really done just a formal video about it, well, except for my outdated one, which I, I, I wish I could just replace that video with this one. I mean, I guess I just personally find it cringy as I'm just looking back on my older videos and I had an older mic then and I'm just talking about outdated theories. That was back when Nacho was still switching the pills for Hector just to give you an idea. So I'm really glad to just, with a better mic, with a more understanding for the situation, fully explain this. And if you have any theories to add on to it, feel free to let me know. And also, if you're watching this video from the future and the show's actually over now, which by the way, that will be a sad day. Do you think that they cleared up all of the questions well? Was the mystery solved and revealed by the end of the show? Because once season 6 ends, if there is a clear cut and dry answer to it all, I will make one more final It Wasn't Me, It Was Ignacio video, truly explaining the entire situation once all the holes have been filled in. Now, I'm not going to repeat everything I said in this video, but, you know, once the mystery has been solved or revealed, we'll do just a full explanation of just the timeline, what everything means, and that sort of thing. It wasn't me, it was Ignacio, is something that will be burned into my head for as long as I can remember, and I'm okay with that. The journey has been incredible, watching the spinoff show grow with such lovable characters, constantly teasing us and hinting us back to the main theory. I hope that the conclusion is satisfying, but we must also try to stay realistic. That being said, I have a lot more faith in the show creators for Better Call Saul than I do in some other shows, so let's just say that we're in good hands. Oh god, I hope that that ages well. Just kidding, I mean, of course it'll age well because Bravo Vince, in Vince we trust, Vince is the man, right? Yeah, Vince is- there we go, Vince is the man. Let's not, let's not forget Peter Gould, but Vince is the man. Paolo is one crazy murderous bastard. <laughs> and Tom, Sna Tom Schnoz as well. He's a guy that exists. And is important. And I wasn't being sarcastic there. Tom Schnoz is great. Alright, I'm, I'm going crazy here. I gotta end the video. So, I thank you all so much for watching the video and taking part in the discussion. Whatever that was. Yeah, season 6. It can't come soon enough. I'll be taking a look at all the comments as this topic has been just the peak of my interest for many years now. And if you've gotten to this point in the video, let me know with your favorite Spanish line that Saul has spoken down below. Now, sometimes a topic can be so elaborate and extensive that as much as I love it, it can be draining. Sometimes it is best to just take a break and then come back with a breath of fresh air, such as the Chuck versus Jimmy brotherly rivalry, but geez, that was a tongue twister, but when it comes to Lalo and Nacho, I'm always ready for more, and I hope that we get a lot more of them to talk about by the end of season 6. And as always, I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything that I've said today, and if you're new here or just haven't yet already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification thing for updates on whenever I do post new content for Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching the video until the end truly helps in the best possible manner, as cliche as that is. And if you want to help support the channel even more, please consider Consider checking out and becoming a member of my Patreon. I've updated it and I'll be working on it more in the future. Link on screen and in the description. 
I remember my end screen links this time, but thank you all in advance to anyone who goes to check out my Patreon, especially if you just want to pitch in a few bucks to help support the channel. But as always, how does Jimmy McGill become Saul Goodman? Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. One second, wait. You are going to love this. Te vas a morir. Gracias. Lalo. It wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one! Hello, I can't... Give me a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. Get, just hand me a dollar, okay. come on. All I got's a 20. Fine, whatever. All right. I'm your lawyer now. If anyone asks me what I know, we have confidentiality. Why do we need confidentiality? Jimmy, what did you say to Chuck? First things first, you're gonna put a dollar in my pocket, both of you. You want attorney-client privilege, don't you? So that everything you say is strictly between us. I mean it. Put a dollar in my pocket. Come on, make it official. Well, I got some five. I'll take a five. Come on already, come on. Be cool.